Hey everyone, Joe here. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to edit a podcast quickly and efficiently so that you can get your podcast out there as quickly as possible. It's really frustrating when you've recorded your podcast, you just wanna get it out there onto the streaming services, um, but you, it's like an hour long and you're thinking, oh, this is gonna take me five to maybe even 10 times the length of the podcast to get edited, especially if it's a, a um, one with where a lot of mistakes have been made and things like that. I normally take about one and 1.5 to two times the length of the podcast to edit it. So if it's an hour long podcast, it'd take me maybe an hour and a half to two hours to edit it. And I'm gonna show you the techniques that I use to edit podcasts quickly. So as you can see, we're in a podcast session here on Pro Tools, but these tips will help regardless of what DAW you're using, whether that's Adobe Audition, Audacity, and so on. I've marked things out. I haven't listened to this podcast at all yet. I'm going in blind here. I've marked this out. Uh, I've topped and tailed it, marked out zero after the intro, and then uh, around five minutes. So two questions and two responses. That's the chunk I'm gonna be focusing on this video. So first I'm gonna go over three top tips and to help you get in the right mindset and give you the tools you need to edit quickly. And then I'm gonna edit this five minute chunk and I really recommend you really try and pay attention to the edits that I make uh, and, and just to my general workflow. Tip number one is use the tools that you have available. Now this is gonna depend on which DIW you use, uh, and which hardware you have. But for example, in Pro Tools, there's this shuffle option. And when you set that, any anything you change, anything you delete or move, so if I make a quick delete there, it shuffles everything in front of it backwards so you don't have to manually move the audio yourself. And I know some other doors do this, but it's just one of the tools that make things a lot quicker. If, you're, if your DAW has a truncate silence, um, function and you've got everything on one track you can just run that at the start to uh, shorten all the the pauses which can really save you some time and using shortcuts as well so uh, shortcuts to scroll along the screen cut cut and copy and paste shortcuts duplicate things like that just really get to know your DAW inside out um, and also your physical environment as well, the equipment. I use a mouse that has a couple of extra buttons on the side so I can customize those buttons um, to do things like cut and play and stuff. And, it, and even though it only sort of saves me split seconds each time, it all adds up as you do this hundreds of times throughout the editing process. Tip number two is that you really wanna get in the zone when you're editing. Make sure that you don't have any interruptions if possible. Um, get your headphones on or, or your speakers and shut the door. Uh, try, try and just really focus on the audio, focus on the words, what they're saying. Try not to let your mind drift off elsewhere. And if you're really in the zone, you can also sort of look ahead. So if you'll, you'll see me do this when we get into the editing part, but if I'm playing this, uh, listening around here to, to the dialogue and then I see that that gap's coming I'll I'll delete that before we even get there so I don't have to stop you want to try and minimize the amount of times you're hitting pause and play sometimes you have to do it you have to listen back to the edits and sometimes there are some difficult interruptions and things that take a little bit longer uh, but yeah just really try and get in the zone and, and focus on, on what's happening and what's coming up. And the third one is the most important by far, it's practice. It takes some time to get really quick at editing and the more podcasts you edit, the quicker you become. It's really that simple. So I'm gonna get started on the edit now. Just keep an eye on what I'm doing, what my, my process is, when I'm pausing and playing, what I'm deleting and cutting and things like that. Um, again, I'm, I'm just editing five minutes of this for you. So I don't wanna be taking more than 10 minutes. I'm not gonna put a timer or anything, but it shouldn't take longer than 10 minutes. So close the door, put your phone on silent, get yourself a drink, pause the video if you need to, and let's get editing. Tweak Digital Podcast, and this is your host, John Peden. Right, joining me today, I am uh, delighted to feature uh, Chris Garrett, CEO of Hyperlaunch, along as having featured uh, Chris Garrett, CEO of Hyperlaunch, along as having founded a bunch of other different startups. Chris, could you tell me a little bit about yourself uh, and about what you have worked on and what you are currently working in the tech self and about what you have worked on and what you are currently working on in the tech space? Um, so I'm a full stack developer and designer by background and um, I'm a full stack 
space? I'm a full stack developer and designer by background, and um, I've got a, <coughs> a history of running. I've got a, <coughs> a history. I've got a, a history of music tech companies. Designer by background, and um, I've got a, a history of music tech companies uh, from quite a young age. Uh, specifically, at the moment, I am the CEO of Decimal FM. Specifically, at the moment, I am the CEO, CEO of Decimal FM, which is a music technology company that works with clients like Universal Music and Cobalt and various other brands to uh, help drive innovation and platform development at various steps along the digital supply chain in the music industry. Um, we've actually just launched our first. Uh, music industry we've actually just launched our first SaaS spin out uh, sparkline which kind of run adjacent to a client project we noticed a need for being able to uh, algorithmically spot interesting artists um able to algorithmically spot interesting artists and bands as they're kind of coming up and uh, a sort of christmas hackathon project uh, led to sparkline kind of emerging as, a, as an analytics tool built on top of spotify uh, to help a and our teams with that and uh, to help a and teams with by to help a and teams with that and um my main focus at the moment and actually a company with that my main focus at the moment and actually a company that we're we're putting together a seed raise that at the moment that we're putting together a seed raise that a seed raise at the moment on it a seed raise a company that we're putting together a seed seed receipt Computer, we're putting together a seed raiser. We're putting together a seed raise at the moment on is putting together a seed raise at the moment on is Hyperlaunch, which is a DevOps tool that that scratches a, a, a long established itch in mind to help developers much more rapidly deploy cloud native applications and high scale infrastructure across hyper clouds like AWS and Azure uh, with minimal config and minimal effort. Sorry for the delay there. Muted. Um, no, that's really interesting. Something that, that struck me. You... No, that's really interesting. Something that, that struck me. You, you, you sort of your, your business is sort of um, very closely aligned with what's going on in. Struck me. You, you, you're sort of very closely aligned with what's going on in. In your, your sort of your, your business is sort of, business is that struck me. You, your business is sort of um, very very closely aligned with what's going on in. in Struck me, you, your business is sort of very closely aligned with what's going on in 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 music and sort of creative arts and that. Isn't is sort of very closely aligned with what's going on in music and sort of creative arts and that that kind of thing, which is I've got a lot of familiarity with. But did the did the two sort of slot slot very well together in your experience? I mean, increasingly, you know, music production increasingly, you know, music production in my limited experience is very very heavily reliant on technology to do the job. You know, ranging from things like auto tune to make people sound perfect all the way through to you know you've got like EDM artists or um I listened to a great podcast about the uh, the glitch mob on the you know you've got like EDM artists or um artists or I don't think we need that phrase in there it just kind of goes nowhere things like auto tune to make people sound perfect all the way through to I listened to a great podcast about the uh, the glitch mob yeah. on the show who it kind of changes changes course. Things there. like auto tune to make people sound perfect. I listened to a great podcast about the uh, the glitch mob on the Tim Ferriss's show, who produce everything electronically. You know, so even if even if they're doing sort of live performances, they've they've sort of made all these sounds themselves, or at least you know bought these sounds from somewhere and then package these songs together. But there's no there's no instruments as such involved. You know, they build these like eight, you know these these I don't even know what you'd call it. We use like an Ableton pad to sort of build this sort of to sort of songs together but there's no there's no instruments as such involved you know they build these like eight, you know, i don't even know what you'd call it. They build these like eight, you know i don't even know what you'd call it we use like an ableton pad i don't need that yeah you yeah, know instruments as such involved you know they build these like i don't even know what you'd call it we use like an ableton pad to sort of build this sort That's of suite of, of sounds you can then use to sort of perform a, a track with but there's obviously um a high but there's obviously a high degree of sort of overlap between these sort of you know creative industries and you know what we do in, in the tech space uh do the two work really well together in your experience do, do these sort of creative industries get what you're trying to do as a as a technologist or is it is it often a hard sell as a as a technology what you're trying to do as a as a tech trying to do as a technologist or is it is it often a hard 
get what you're trying to do as a technologist? Is it often a hard sell? Technologist, or is it often a hard sell? Yeah, I mean, just or is it often a hard sell? Yeah, I mean, I, I it's kind of interesting because sort of philosophically, I, I sell. It's kind of interesting because sort of philosophically, I, I tend to think of the record industry as a, as a software industry. It was the first time. It was the first time that a, a kind of non industry. It was the first time. It was a kind of non to the software industry. It's the first time that a, a kind of non-physical asset really took value and became an industry. It's the first time that a kind of non-physical asset really took value and became something that, that could reach a drastically outsized audience. If you think about it, recording music was probably one of the first things that that, that didn't require physical presence to to kind of be one of the first things that that, that didn't require physical presence to to kind of be consumed as a good was probably one of the first things that, that didn't require physical presence. Kind of one of the first things that, that didn't require physical presence to to kind of be consumed as a good. And so I think there's a lot of similarity there. Ultimately music is consumed as a good. And so I think there's a lot of similarity there. Ultimately music is just a form of data. And um, you know that's really interesting because there's a lot of starts that find it a form of data. And um, that's really interesting because there's a lot of startups now and actually one I found it quite a few years ago that there was a little bit early to market that are very much focused on interpreting music as data. So we did it for um, data. So we did it for um, driving synchronization. So helping helping music supervisors actually fix well with a particular avatar for driving synchronization. So helping helping music supervisors actually for music that fits well with a particular avatar that they're trying to put pitch a song to. Um, but actually the pitch a song to but actually the, the big use case now is it is in ml and ml generated music you're essentially able to interpret music as data train an ml on it and consequently create new music from that and that's that's a really interesting space the industry from that and that's that's a really interesting space the industry on the whole the record industry on the whole is ridiculously data rich um i don't know if you if you know if you distribute if you notice but if you distribute music spotify you actually, you actually get a feed of every single stream your track has had on Spotify, which playlist it was played in, what the gender in city of the user was that was listening to it, when they listened to it, what the search term was that they used to find it, like mass, a massive amount of data. And we worked with a, to give you an example, we worked with a, a fairly small distributor um, a couple of years ago that had, I'd say about 20 acts. They're actually part of Apple now, but, um, but at the time across 20 acts, Part of Apple now, but um, but at the time across 20 acts they were generating part of Apple now, but at the time across 20 acts they were generating like four billion rows of data every six months, which is is phenomenal. And uh, you know they're they're a very tiny fish in a very big sea. So can you imagine what someone like Universal Music is generating data wise? Probably just oh, more data than they could ever. It's a bit like the NSA or something. You know, there's more more data there than they could ever conceivably process. Is there? Yeah, this is this is actually one of the biggest issues for the record industry, and in that it's there's there's a few very very large, very very profitable organisations that can really bring in the data scientists necessary to kind of make the most of that, and then there's very small, low margin record labels that are still generating the sort of data sets that warrant you know, someone who knows what they're doing with big data, and they just don't have the margins there to be able to bring that person in and actually make the most of it. So in that respect, there is there's a there's a, a large portion in this. So in that respect, there is there's a there's a. So in that respect, there's a, a large porting industry that 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 kind of needs better industry that kind of needs better tooling around its data, but it's not it's not really available. Really available. It's, it's- and there we go. So there we go. That's the first five minutes of that podcast edited. Uh, you can see it's uh, that's been pulled back a little bit from the five minute marker because I've deleted a few things. It took about 10 minutes, so about two times the length of the podcast, which isn't too bad. Um, that's sort of the upper end of, of what I mentioned before, but quite a lot of cuts to be made, quite a lot of stuttering and things. But I haven't removed anything of value, just making it nice and concise and clean, um, making it more pleasant for the listener. And, and increasing listener retention. So just go out there and do as much editing as possible. If you have any questions at all about the techniques that I've used um, or why I made certain certain decisions with the editing and things like that, just leave them in the comments section below. And for more audio recording, editing and mixing tips and tutorials, just hit that subscribe button below. We've got new videos coming out every single week. And as always, thank you so much for watching 
and I'll see you next time.